If you're starting your smart home in 2024, or you already have one, you should be using HomeKit and Home Assistant. These are two amazing platforms and using them together provides the best of both worlds. High spousal approval factor and super powerful automations. Starting fresh with your smart home setup can be a bit daunting. If you haven't used Home Assistant before, it can take some time to get familiar with it. But the good news is there are tons of great resources on how to get started with a brand new instance. But once you have Home Assistant up and running, what next? Let's talk about how to play to the strengths of both Home Assistant and HomeKit. And a quick side note for Android users, I have an iPhone, but for the purposes of this video, when I talk about HomeKit, it also applies to Google Home because the strengths of Google Home are quite similar to HomeKit. First, let's talk about the strengths of HomeKit. Number one is native smartphone app support. It's already on your phone or your significant other's phone, which means you don't have to install anything else. Number two, it's easy to share access. Because the Home app is pre-installed on most iPhones, it's actually really easy to share access to your smart home with your friends and family that also have an iPhone. This is great if people are visiting and you want them to be able to control your home without setting up a new Home Assistant username and password. Number three, the UI is very familiar for platform users. You may have seen videos of really cool Home Assistant dashboards, but those have a learning curve and it's a completely new app that you have to teach someone to use. With HomeKit, it's pretty intuitive and matches the design patterns on the rest of the platform, which just makes it feel familiar. Finally, number four, Voice Assistant. You get Voice Assistant control out of the box and you won't have to roll your own. I have a love-hate relationship with Siri, as I'm sure many of you do, but it does work most of the time. Then we have Home Assistant. Let's talk about some of the strengths that Home Assistant brings to the table. Number one, you can integrate everything. It's rare that I come across a smart device that I can't find a way to integrate into Home Assistant. Now these integrations do rely on the community to maintain, but Home Assistant is one of the top open source projects in the world. Number two, automations on Home Assistant are crazy powerful. You can do pretty much anything with anything. And although there is a learning curve, you can learn as you go, and over time, your automations are gonna get smarter and more sophisticated. Number three, it's great for tinkering. I'm kind of a smart home nerd, maybe you can tell. So Home Assistant is a great place for me to tinker with automations, create new dashboards, change things up, and my wife is never bothered by any of it. If I was changing dashboards in HomeKit, that would be a completely different story. Lastly, local control. By integrating with Home Assistant, a lot of devices that would normally require cloud control or a proprietary app to be able to be controlled, that doesn't have to happen with Home Assistant. This means when the internet is out, if your home network is still up and the power is on, your devices will still work. Now, as you can see, both of these platforms have some really great strengths. The best part is you can use both of them at the same time through the HomeKit bridge integration and Home Assistant. I've been doing this for years and it is very reliable. So let me show you in Home Assistant how you can set up a HomeKit bridge for all of your devices. So here we are in Home Assistant. This is a brand new Home Assistant instance that I use for testing. Nothing has been configured other than putting in my name and a little bit of information. Some of the devices that you see here have been automatically added because they're on my network. So what you wanna do when you're first setting up Home Assistant and you wanna bring in HomeKit or you wanna allow HomeKit to be used with Home Assistant is you wanna set up a HomeKit bridge. The way that you do that, you go to settings and then you look at the devices and services tabs. You might see a lot of devices here with some HomeKit icons. Hold on that for a second. What you want to do is you want to add an integration. You can search Apple and you will see HomeKit bridge. This is the one you want. The first thing you're gonna be prompted with is what's honestly kind of a little bit of a confusing screen. It asks you which domains you want to be included. For now, you don't have to worry about this too much because you're not gonna have any devices. Or if you do have a lot of devices, you can think about this a little bit. Essentially, what this means is which devices do you want Home Assistant to send to HomeKit? So in this case, the camera, if, if I had a camera that's gonna be sent over, or if I had a cover like a garage door that's gonna be sent over, but buttons aren't. And you may want buttons to show up in Home Assist or to show up in HomeKit. It's up to you and you can kind of choose and pick and choose as you want, but this is a generally good list to start with. The defaults are fine. Uh, you will notice here that scenes are not uh, sent over to HomeKit, but they could be. 
So for now, we'll just hit submit. These are the domains that HomeKit is going to see. Once you have your HomeKit bridge set up, you're gonna see in the notifications in Home Assistant that there is a HomeKit pairing code. This is what you're gonna to need to connect your phone and HomeKit to Home Assistant. So now let's switch over to HomeKit on my phone. You'll see that there's no devices, there's nothing from my network that's showing up right now. What I need to do is I need to connect Home Assistant to HomeKit. And the way that I do that is I hit Add Accessory. So I hit that Add Accessory button. Now I scan, there's my code. I hit Add to Home. You will see this pop up that it says it's an uncertified accessory. Don't worry because you know what you're doing. Hit Add Anyway. And now you can select where the bridge location is. Usually I put this in the basement and you could name it if you wanted to, but we'll just hit continue. So what's really cool is that all of those devices are now being fed into HomeKit. Now I could go through and identify which lights these are, which rooms they're in, and that's something that you're gonna to wanna to do. But for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna exit the setup right now. And you'll see that the default room is pulling in all the devices that I already have in Home Assistant that have been automatically configured, which is really amazing. So as you add new devices to Home Assistant, they're gonna show up in HomeKit and you can put them in different rooms in HomeKit. So at this point, you're gonna to wanna to move devices to different rooms. You can set up wallpapers. You can get it the way that your significant other wants to use HomeKit or the way that you wanna use HomeKit. And there you have it. Moving back to Home Assistant, the way to think about how to add devices is actually to always add them to Home Assistant first. Now on this dashboard, you see some devices have automatically been discovered and some of them are actually HomeKit devices. You can see this bridge up here, another smart bridge, which is our Lutron lights. And then lastly here is a Ratio smart watering uh, system. So those are actually gonna be automatically picked up by Home Assistant, which is great because they broadcast over the HomeKit protocols, which is just over Wi-Fi. So anytime you have a HomeKit device, you wanna pair it through Home Assistant. And then again, once you pair it in Home Assistant, you can then decide to send it over to HomeBridge, through the HomeBridge, uh, to HomeKit. And there's even additional things you can do here where you can specifically include or exclude certain devices. So you'll see here that you can select specific entities to either be included or excluded. And honestly, this just takes a little bit of trial error to turn things on, see if they show up and make sure you get it set up the way you want. Anytime you do make a change, just hit reload and you'll automatically see it start to show up in your iPhone, which is very easy to test very rapidly. And that is it in a nutshell the best of both worlds. You've got HomeKit connected to Home Assistant. You get to configure things the way that you want in your phone, and you get to use all of the amazing automations from Home Assistant. It's always fun to start fresh in a new year, and I'm excited to keep building my Home Assistant and HomeKit smart homes. My solution works for me and my wife, but I'm curious what's working best for you. Let me know in the comments and please consider subscribing. My New Year's resolution is to post content more frequently on this channel, so I'd love your support. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the future.